In this video, we will take a closer look at the ND filters that is provided by Freewell for the Autel Nano and Nano Plus. Let's just look at some sample footage recorded with the ND64 around the beautiful Coburg Castle. This filter kit is from Freewell and is the all-day filter kit that contains a ND4, ND8, ND16, 32, 64 and a ND1000. If you don't already know what these numbers mean, a ND4 is equal to one stop. And one stop actually means either halving or doubling the amount of light. So by mounting a ND4, we'll reduce the light with one stop, meaning that it will half the amount of light that will enter through the lens to the center of the drone. If you mount a ND8, that is equal to two stops. That means that you will half the light two times compared to not having a filter on the drone. The fillers are made of hard plastic and they are shaped in a way so they fit very nicely in place when you snap it onto the camera. Because they're made of plastic, I guess this is to make them light, so the drone still keeps below 250 grams. These fillers are ND fillers, which means that they are neutral density fillers and they should not, at least in theory, add or subtract anything from your footage. So there's no magic in this box that automatically will transform your image into something really great by just slapping on the fillers. You really need to know how to use them. I do want to mention that I have seen by using the higher numbers of ND filters that it will shift the colors of the image in general towards the warmer tones. This is not a big issue, but something you need to be aware of if you want to keep a consistent color temperature throughout your footage. This filler kit is a bit different than what we normally see from Freewell as they normally include polarizer filters that will help boost saturations in your image. But this is not the case with the all-day filler kit that was kindly provided by Freewell. But they included a ND1000, which is a very dark filler that we will talk about a bit later in this video. There is a lot of misconceptions about when and where and how to use these ND fillers on the interweb, but I've made a ton of videos here on the channel covering that topic. So I'll make sure to include a playlist with all the videos that I've made around ND fillers for your convenience in the description below. As the principle is the same, you will gain a lot of knowledge by watching these videos. The primary use of ND fillers are when you are recording video. You can use ND fillers to reduce the frame rate on your video to generate motion blur. Motion blur can help smoothen out your footage. That otherwise would look really jerky and stuttery if your shutter speed is too high. There's a golden rule, also commonly known as the 180 degree rule, that says you should strive to get your shutter speed at the double of the frame rate. The low shutter speed introduces motion blur between each frame, helping smoothing everything out. As an example of 30 frames per second, you should have 1 over 60 in shutter speed in an ideal scenario. But you know what? This is a rule. And in general, you will be perfectly fine flying without filters if there's little to no movement in the scene that you're shooting. So in short, there needs to be motion in the frame for you to take advantage of these filters. Motion can come in many shapes and sizes. It does not need to be an object that moves inside the scene that you're shooting. Motion also occurs if you fly close to the ground, also if you decide to do a simple pan where you're moving the camera relatively to the background. Getting the shutter speed spot on in the real world will require you to run the camera in manual settings. And because you can't change the filter nor the aperture while you're airborne, it can sometimes be difficult to get it to exactly 1 over 60 without your footage either being under or overexposed. But don't be discouraged by that, as I normally just pick a filter that matches the weather conditions that I'm flying. Like ND16 for overcast and ND32 or 64 for sunny conditions, and then I simply run the camera in auto. This will lower your overall shutter speed, and even if it's not as low as 1 over 60, it will still improve the smoothness of your footage compared to running it without. The only thing you need to be aware of is not to pick a filter that is too dark, as your shutter speed might end up being too low, and the amount of motion blur will be too much, making your footage look unsharp and blurry. 
Then you're probably thinking, how do I do that? There's basically no way around you getting out, getting some real life experience using these uh, fillers. And that will help you sort of sense what kind of filler that you need to use in a certain situation. But my recommendations from before using ND816 ish for overcast and then uh, bumping it up to 3264 when it's sunny is a pretty good recommendation. You might have noticed there's an ND1000 filter included in the kit. This filter is very dark. It's 10 stops, meaning that the light have been half 10 times, allowing us to use very slow shutter speeds like one to eight seconds, depending on the light conditions. This will of course not work for video as the lowest possible frame rate at 30 frames per second will be one over 30. With shutter speeds in seconds and still managing to keep the exposure, that will let us play around with long exposure photography. With this technique, you can create some really artistic results, which is something that we could cover in a separate video. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I've made a ton of videos covering ND fillers on various types of DJI drones, and uh, I've collected everything in a playlist that you can access in this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.